Hello and welcome to Geek at Play Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, let's look more on the primitives, what type of primitives we have it and uh, what they give it to us. In some cases, you can look on them as a beginning base building blocks for your future model. And in some tutorials, you can see by using the cube, you can build your actual full animal. Some, And uh, we will show this. It's very easy to do with subdivisions and increasing. Some of the primitives will require operation sequence. And in its way, like for example, it's cylinder, we're creating first diameter. Next, our sequence is creating how height we want it. We can next also say if we want it open or closed on the end. Also, we can put it how many sections or points we want to have it here. And when we complete it, we can go right here and click validate, or you can press enter. And this will create object for us. So this is uh, some primitives will require um, multiple steps. That will be similar with a cone and with hexagon and other ones, um, primitives. The facets is a little bit different. So what it does, we can almost go, and go ahead and outline shape maybe based on a picture if you want it and every time when you click it will create one and when you're done just double time click that will create shape for us also we can click validate and it will finalize so we'll have it done and uh, one thing actually about pass you need to know so let's uh, say we have it uh, some cube and now when while this cube is selecting I'm going to create facet okay let's validate what's happening if you notice it's not separate now the cube that was selecting the facet it's a part of the same object became and that can be sometimes confusing so what do you want to do when you have it one object and you want to create independent facet just press escape so it's unselected and when everything unselected Go ahead, create a new facet, and it will have it as different form, different object. So you can manipulate them independently. Okay, other one is also different. It will be our grid. And a grid, let's say it's like a symmetrical facet, because you will create a um, rectangle. But when you select first rectangle and you first time click with your mouse, now you can create segments and you see by drag and dropping or you can just go right here and type it's how many segments you want so it's will create also other things um, the grid is very useful because we can create a lot of interesting landscapes or give us more manipulations over um, Example, some other things if we want to create roof around the house or some other things so you can go to do that way so it's a little bit more flexibility with those ones you can still do same on a faucet but we will need to add additional um, slicing between and I'll do other stuff okay so let's go ahead and delete this one and this is about all primitives. Now let's go to our text. And many applications provide for you text options. What is nice to using this text in a hexagon? That you actually can modify and edit some shapes in the, around here. So if we're going to uh, select faces, you can notice how we can actually I want to go straight there you go how we can go select specific faces and modify them on our model directly so in some applications like for example in view if you do this you have some flexibility when it's spread but to total modify font as a models you probably want to use the hexagon for this 
Okay, this is our primitives and just go ahead click on each of them and start play around and see what is options they give it to you how you can modify them um, other things also let's look let's create couple different objects okay so we validate let's look on selections how we can select them so in many cases you can click on an object by selecting or you can click inside the, your form and some like for example in mine I have a hard time sometimes clicking inside on my other machine it's just simple clicking I think it's just related to this but you also can select from your scenes tree other ways you can also by right click on your mouse and just drag around the group to select which items you wanted um, but this one as you notice it is a selection rectangle mode if you click a lasso mode what's happening now you can see I can draw around the object my selection and this is very helpful when you start having like multiple objects on this point you actually can go ahead and select just those objects you wanted avoid every other one which you don't want it so this is helpful lasso but most time you probably will use just rectangle go over or just select one object I also want to select one object if you press and hold down shift key you can select multiple objects so you can again press down shift and you notice you have it like um, blue arrows two arrows around the cursor so you can select and deselect as long you're holding shift button down some of your object again you can click side or press escape to deselect everything Okay, this is about selection. Also, you can utilize selection from the drop down. And here is a couple things. Let me show actually some of the selections. So we have it. Um, let's delete unnecessary items. And let's have it our sphere. So, example, you remember like before in a sphere when we selected one face and we're going down and we'll press L. L stands for loop, so it's running around. And uh, we're also going to one over, and we did modification. If you remember, it's what we're using one over. So you actually can do other ways. When you select object, you can go to selections, select one over, and now you're typing here three validate, and it will select this way for you as well. So you can have a selection done. Um, through the uh, manipulation to L loop first and other ones or you can go over here and just have it pre uh, selections for you from drop down menu okay next um, so also some other um, selections example we can go to say select the edges we select one and if L for the loop give it us a loop K it's actually will give it us the ring selection so let's select one press K and this is what give it us ring selection again uh, probably best if we do it this way so you can preview how it's going to give it us ring selection okay also another one shortcut if we select one and two and we pray J it's give it us selection between those two points so again if we select this point we select this and I want select between them I just press J and it will create its selections between two okay um, also you notice when we select before we was using the hours top one so it will be select the object select the faces select the edges and select the points or vertex and after select um, some people do like select after it's just depend where you're going so you can see how it switch between where you're pointing um, personally I find it's a little bit hard for me on smaller models so I like to go select directly what I wanted but it's up to you try to play with both of them and see it okay next is let's look on this manipulation and we was using universal gizmo so it allowed us to do everything um, sometimes it may become too crowd and you want to switch it between different ones so by selecting um, numbers on your keypad you can actually 
um, go between mode. So in, by using these ones, you can actually uh, specify what type of operation you want to apply to the object. Okay, one other thing is, let's go back to our universal gizmo. You have it under what type of the manipulation is set. So let's, probably best preview will be if we create a cube, okay? And you notice when we start stretching or moving, we have a world position. So top, left, right, or X, Y, Z. And when we even going and a little bit rotating, the arrow gizmo are aligned against the um, world position. And it's very useful, but sometimes, for example, when we adjust a one stretch, but see, it doesn't go right. It's a skew too much. So to do this, we'll switch to the selection. And that's what happened now. We're going with these selections so we can orientation keeping and all aside keeping against this selection you have another one bounding box and it's mostly will used when we have it a group of the object but um, in a many situation we will use it or world world or a selection it just depends what you want to achieve it or what we will do it but those ones two modes is mostly what we will use it Okay, this is kind of our little bit look on primitives. Let's try to do a couple things. And you kind of will be surprised what you can achieve with primitives. For so example, we did before. Like we did for the chair, so we'll squish, expand a little bit. Let's move it. Okay. Maybe just a little bit. Control D to duplicate. Okay, let's duplicate one more time. And similar ways you can just play around, maybe create um, steps, just create some other object around, rotate them. Just try to manipulate. All what you need to do, just duplicate, create primitives, and use your gizmo gadget. Just create something. Just play around with them, adjusting, modifying. If you want to just cut more, you can do same things what I'm doing. Just how I said before, I want to rotate. I want all what you need to do, just practicing. With the, with the objects, try to create just the primitives and just using your gizmo tool try to create okay, four validate hold the shift let's create something, just play around with the primitives it's all what we need to do right now and here you go. Here's our kind of silly cannon with things in the middle. Okay. And again, this is just basic primitives who was playing and we can apply the shape. Of course, if you want to create real looking cannon, we can go ahead and up, uh, modify some other ones, polygons, but all our goal right now is just for you to try to play with different selections and different primitives and with the gizmo tool. Okay, thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek at Play Studio. Please come visit us on the web at www.geekatplay.com.